Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. As you can see, I am back home. I actually got in really late last night, so I'll be returning to my normal style videos either tomorrow or Monday. Until then, I hope everyone's 2021 has started out great. Once again, a huge thanks to everyone that was able to get the channel to 200,000 subscribers. I'm so grateful to all of you. And if you aren't subscribed, make sure to hit that button as well as that bell icon to keep up with all things gaming hardware. Either way, I've got some huge stories for you today. Intel's 11,900K is an absolute beast, RTX 3000 mobile specs leak, hardware pricing increase, and miners are buying up GPUs. So yeah, let's just get right to it. Starting things off, we have AMD's Ryzen Threadripper 5000 series called Genesis Peak set to launch, at least according to these rumors, at CES 2021. So yeah, that means just a week or so off. What's interesting about this is that the leaker One Usmus actually posted on Twitter that effectively the hex code translates to it being 16 cores. And that's obviously a bit odd just because the Ryzen series already has a 16 core model. Maybe the 16 core Threadripper model can get slightly higher clocks. Then again, obviously Threadripper's chipsets are significantly better than Ryzen's and offer quite a bit more features. So at the same time, that could easily be why. Maybe you don't need 24 or 32 cores. 16 does just fine, but you need the features of Threadripper's chipset. Either way, it does sound like it's going to be coming this year, and that isn't too big of a surprise. What is a surprise is just how powerful Intel's upcoming Rocket Lake CPUs actually are. In a recent leak that originally comes from Chipel's forums, as you can see, we actually have a CPU-Z benchmark of the 11,900K. Now, remember that unlike the 10,900K, this is an 8-core CPU. And while it is on 14 nanometers, it uses an updated core. So this is one of the first times in quite a while that we're actually seeing a very real architectural difference on desktop from Intel. So of course, this is really exciting, but we have heard of some really high power draw from these CPUs. Still, for most, performance is the number one thing here, and what's interesting is that the 11,900K actually broke the 700 point mark, which is something that I don't believe has ever been done, so it's effectively a record for the single core benchmark on CPU-Z. As you can see, it actually scored a whopping 706.3, which as I said, no one's ever gotten past 700 on the single core benchmark for CPU-Z until now. And it did this with an all-core overclock of 5.2 gigahertz. That is definitely quite impressive. And as you can see, it absolutely beats anything before it. Of course, it gets fairly close to a recent overclock of the 11,900K as well as 11,700K, at least their scores. But when compared to the 5800X, you can see that it definitely beats it, and it absolutely crushes their last-gen 10700K. And what's even more interesting about this is that it even does fantastic in multi-core performance. You can see that the 11900K at this 5.2 GHz absolutely beats, though not by much, the 5800X, but completely crushes the 10700K. Basically, even multi-core score is getting quite a bit of a boost here. The issue is that, once again, this only goes up to 8 cores. So this is going to be Intel's best desktop CPU, but of course the 5900X and absolutely the 5950X will completely crush it in multi-core performance, but when we're talking most things like gaming and things like that, using up to 12 cores, at least for now, isn't really that big of a thing. It doesn't happen that often, though, with that said, I would love to see what the performance is going to be in games comparing the higher end Ryzen versus Intel CPU. Will Intel be able to come back? I don't know. This score is very much impressive, and once again, it really makes me excited for Intel's upcoming 10 nanometer parts, though. Of course, these are still just 14 nanometers. Of course, that isn't all when it comes to next-gen processors, as NVIDIA's upcoming RTX 3000 mobile lineup has just been leaked. As you can see, this was recently leaked by Notebook Check, and if you followed the channel, you know that we recently saw the mobile RTX 3080 is expected to come with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6. Unfortunately, all we really heard at that time was memory, 
but we now have significantly more specs. And as you can see here, uh, Notebook Check effectively confirms that 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. Though it does look like they're gonna be offering two different variants, one with eight gigabytes of GDDR6 and one with 16. And remember that this is GDDR6, not GDDR6X. When it comes to the new specs, we can see right here the RTX 3080 mobile comes with 6,144 cores at 1.1 to 1.7 gigahertz. Now, now, if you're familiar with the desktop variants of NVIDIA's RTX 3000 series, you know that the 3080 has over 2,000 more cores than the 3080 mobile. Basically, NVIDIA looks to be going back to the days to where they're doing cut down mobile variants. Of course, I guess this isn't that much of a surprise given how much wattage NVIDIA's RTX 3000 series can pull, but it's still fairly sad. I mean, the simple fact is that when you get to the 3080 mobile, given these are correct, you're absolutely not going to get anywhere near the same performance as the desktop variant. Now, obviously you would have lower clocks with the mobile variants, but also having cut down cores is pretty sad. Moving on, we have the RTX 3070 mobile, which also still comes down with cut down cores, but at the same time, it isn't nearly as bad as the 3080 mobile, but we're still looking at over 700 cores. And while obviously we weren't 100% sure how accurate these were, at the same time, Tom Apisak actually shared a couple Geekbench benchmarks that effectively confirms it for the 3070 laptop. You can see that it comes with 40 compute units, which should end up being that 5,120. And here, it looks like it's gonna be clocked at 1.1 to 1.62 gigahertz. And lastly, we have the RTX 3060 mobile, which comes with 3,072 cores at 0.9 to 1.7 gigahertz. Overall, these definitely are set to be some of the most powerful mobile GPUs. Then again, that's until AMD releases theirs. Of course, I know a ton of you aren't even able to buy the desktop variants, and that definitely sucks, which I'll actually be getting to that in just a minute or so, but first, we have some more bad news, as it looks like my drivers recently reported that Intel's lower-end B460 and H410 chipsets are currently out of stock in quite a bit of places, and it looks like because of that, they are reporting that we should expect increased motherboard pricing during the first quarter of 2021. And not only that, but Tom's Hardware were able to talk to their industry sources and basically confirm that there is a shortage of lower end chipsets. Obviously, whether that'll actually increase prices is somewhat up in the air, but it does seem likely. So yeah, 2021 is already looking terrible for PC gamers, and unfortunately, today's last story looks even worse. As you can see here, a new Ethereum mining farm was just spotted in Las Vegas with 78 RTX 3080 GPUs. You can see right here that these are PNY GPUs, and this is pretty much terrible news. As if it wasn't bad enough that we had to deal with scalpers trying to buy the GPUs out from under us and then resell them to gamers, now we have even more competition. And this is even worse because miners are actually able to pay those much higher prices, which scalpers wouldn't because they're the ones actually trying to sell it for that, trying to buy low, sell high. But miners actually make money from keeping the cards over time. So they're willing to spend even more money than scalpers are, making it where you aren't just competing with, you know, your rich gamer friend on eBay. You're now competing with miners who can effectively do this for a living. And the reason for this is because if you haven't kept up with the market lately, Bitcoin's prices have absolutely skyrocketed. Back in 2017, when it was nearly impossible to buy a GPU, it peaked a little over $20,000. But right now, it's already at $33,000. And yes, before you say it, I do understand that no one mines Bitcoin with regular GPUs. They use ASICs. But you have to understand that Bitcoin is the main cryptocurrency and pretty much everything follows suit. When Bitcoin rises, most everything else does as well. And that includes Ethereum. Now, you can see right now that as of the last year, it has skyrocketed. Around February, we're looking at less than $300. And now at the end of the year, or well, the beginning of this year, we're nearing $800. 
Of course, when we do go back five years during that big hike, uh, it actually got significantly higher than where it is now, but at the same time, it is getting very close. Now, with that said, there is some fairly good news because Ethereum is supposed to be switching to uh, basically a different type of proof of work rather than using GPUs or anything like that. It's, it's proof of stake, I believe it's called, and it works fairly differently, but at the same time, Ethereum has been promising this for quite a while. At the end of the day, it looks like 2021 is shaping up to already be worse than 2020. Hopefully that isn't true, but with it being nearly impossible already to buy a GPU because of such low supply, with the rise in demand from miners, it looks like it could get even worse and prices could go even higher. Really, I think our only hope is that if both AMD and Nvidia are able to manufacture more supply, then the demand is coming in. But I really don't see that happening anytime soon, especially with miners coming in and potentially buying up all the stock yet again. Of course, that could be wrong, and for all we know, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies could plummet again, who knows? But as of now, it's not looking good. With that said, I will have links down in the description to GPUs. I know that they do go on sale pretty often, so try to check back often. Those are affiliate links, and they do help the channel out. So yeah, hopefully you liked the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and let me know what you think about this whole situation down in the comments below. And as always, have a great day.